Hello, friends. Welcome to Conscious Conversion. Thank you so much, as always, for listening. Today, my guest is the beautiful and lovely Kendall Summerhawk, <laughs> a longtime client and has become a dear friend of mine. And she's the creative founder of the number one business and money certified coach training school. Kendall equips and empowers ambitious, passionate women with the coaching skills and the done-for-you coaching content that makes it easy to sign on one-on-one -on -one and group coaching clients so that you can create a highly profitable coaching business working with clients you love and enjoy a business that gives significant time, freedom, and flexibility in your life as a result. Kendall runs a seven-figure business, and her teachings have earned her nine Stevie Awards, including for Mentor of the Year and Women Helping Women. Kendall works from home in Arizona, enjoying lots of time riding and training dressage with her beautiful Spanish Andalusian horses. Did I say that right? Yes, you did. And spending, <laughs> spending time loving her life with her husband and business partner, Richard. And Kendall, I am so honored to have you as a guest on today's show and as a client. And thank you so much for being here. Oh, you're so welcome. It's my treat. We're going to have a lot of fun here. Yay. I think I we're going to laugh as much as we talk. So let's see. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So my first question is, what kind of impact do you make, want to make on the world in the next five years? What kind of impact? This is great because as we were chatting about a minute ago, I have no idea what you're going to ask me. So it's <laughs> totally unrehearsed. What kind of impact? I, you know, the impact that I want to make is really on an individual basis. You know, we, we serve a lot of people through my company, you know, training them to be certified coaches in business and in money. But, but for me, it's about the individual. And so it's helping, you know, it's helping, and I can name off all of the names. So it's helping all of these women really start to make money, make it consistently. And then to see that shift that happens for them, you know, as they're starting to make 10,000, 15, 20, 30, 40,000 a month, whatever it is, that they really start and, and to see that they can do that and to see the ripple effect of what happens for them over a number of years of making six figures, multi six and into seven, if that's their goal. So I would say it's that more than the typical, oh, I want to save the world. You know, my mission is to empower women's financial independence through entrepreneurship. So that's, that's my whole mission is to empower women's financial independence through entrepreneurship. And, but, but I see that as individual by individual, and that's what's most gratifying for me. Mm. So what, what kind of women do you feel like resonate with you the most? Women who resonate with me the most are interesting. They are definitely, you know, I believe that our ideal clients are a reflection of us and, um, and it's not, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, they're a reflection of where you were a few years ago. And I think that that's, that, I do think that that's true for the most part. But I also think that that's kind of a um, more superficial way of looking at it. I think that our clients really are a reflection of, uh, literally of us, of who we are. Not that they're just like us. That's, that's not what I'm saying. But they reflect core virtues and values about ourselves. Mm. So for me, the people who are really, you know, we attract are women who are really smart. They're incredibly ambitious. They have a lot of, you know, I mean, you know me, I coach a lot on money. So they have a lot of money shame, even money shame around being ambitious, money shame around being successful. They're often leaders. They are, and, and leaders, not necessarily by a position, but leaders in who they are in their life and in their world. I think that they're incredibly soulful, spiritual women. I mean, like incredibly soulful, spiritual women. And they deeply care and have this deep passion, unrelenting passion, really, for helping other women be successful. And that's, that's who we attract. And the thing that's interesting is that because we do the certified coach training and we give done for you content is what really makes us unique and different in what we do, both as a business coach and as a money coach with the sacred money archetypes. But because of what we do, we often are ca catching women when they're at this juncture, they're at this transition point. You know, they're on a path and they've got like a left turn, a right turn that they can make. And they're not quite sure what it is. They just know they have to do something different in their life. So we really catch them at this, like I said, at this juncture of their journey in, in wanting to coach, quite truthfully. I mean, most of the women coming to us, they know they want to coach. They really want to coach. 
and they want to be successful coaching, whether they've tried it before or not. And they often feel like they've been coaching. Um, they, they often say, you know, I feel like I've been coaching all my life. And that's mm -hmm. how I felt when I discovered mm -hmm. coaching. And so that's, um, <clears throat> that's what they all have in common. And they're go-getters. You know, we attract fire starters. And I use that in my marketing. And that's a very authentic message for me. And you know that because of the Facebook ads that you support us in creating um, and do such a beautiful job with us at, do, at making those happen. You know, we talk about being a fire starter. And I want that woman who is like ready to go because you have to have that energy in order to overcome all the challenges and the obstacles and the doubts and the fears that come along with being in business for oneself. Yeah, beautiful. And I know that you said that, um, you know, your, your impact over the next five years is with individuals. And you mentioned this, but that ripple impact of serving mm -hmm. people who mm -hmm. actually want to empower more women. And, and I feel like that has um, a, a beautiful global impact the more that we empower women, even though that might not be your sort of be all end all, that's, that's the it, natural. It actually is. And, and I won't say that it's n entirely not my be all end all. It's something that I hold. I, I'm not trying to change the world by changing the world. I want to change the world one woman at a time. Yeah. Um, you know, and my business is incredibly leveraged and we're, we're very successful and we're great with systems. So it's not like if I'm going to have 500 people come into a program in a year, I'm going to work with all 500 of them. It isn't like that. But what I say, what I mean is that because the individual is so important to me, mm -hmm. um, I've set up my business to really be um, a highly intimate, highly caring feeling to my business. So it, it really feels like that. Our clients feel like we care for them. And it, you know, it's my goal that every client feel like they're my only client or feel like they're mm -hmm. our most important client. So we set ourselves up to have each client feel that way. And it trips them out sometimes because they're not used to it. But it is that ripple effect. It's like, so in the back of my mind, I've got that overarching changing the world uh, goal. But the way I'm doing it is through me, through each of the women we train and certified. And then she goes out and has that bigger impact. And I'll tell you, Sarah, it's been so gratifying because I've been doing this for quite some time that over the years I have, I mean, I just got an email just the other day from a woman who took our training. I don't even know, several, like five years ago, right? And she said, you have no idea the impact you've had, not just on my life, but on all the lives that I'm touching through my coaching, thanks to what you trained me to do. And that's exactly what I want to hear. So I, I just love that idea because it makes it be very intimate and special for the people we help. And I get to have that bigger impact without feeling the weight of the world on my shoulders. <laughs> right. And so what kind of like rituals, routines, things do you do throughout your day to help you show up aligned and ready to serve these women? That's a great question because I'm very aware of showing up aligned every single day. Yeah. And there are days where like it's effortless and it's thoughtless and that I don't have to think about it. It just happens. It's, it's automatic, I should say. And there are days where I have to be a little more aware when things maybe one of my horses is sick or Richard and I had a fight because, you know, we, we've been married now. Um, actually, this month will be our 18th wedding anniversary. So we've been married mm -hmm. a long time. We work Congratulations. Together. Yeah, thank you. And we work together extremely well. We like we like we work together super well, except for when we don't. And so, um, and actually mine's a whole family business. All of my family works with me in this business. So what are, to go back to your question, what are some of the rituals? I do do morning pages every morning where you just free write and then you throw it away. You don't read it. You don't analyze it. You shred it. So I do. And that's from Julia Cameron's The Artist Way. It's wonderful, wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, it's a wonderful exercise. So I do that. And before I start my day, and I also just say, I, ask, I set my intention for the day of what, what do I want to have happen today? You know, and I say, I'm not a religious person at all, but I'm deeply spiritual. So I ask God, I say, please, God, here's what I'd like today. I want this to happen. And I'm really specific about it. Like, I want to make X amount of money. I want something magical to happen. You know, I mean, like, I'm just like super specific most, for most of it. And then I say, it's going to be a great day. I look at this beautiful place where I live. I look at the mountains and um, that we live right at the foot of these beautiful mountains. And I say, this is good. I just say, declare, it, it's going to be a great day. And mm. then I just go through my day. And I think the thing is that, um, I think the number one thing that I do, because, you know, I, have, I run a busy business, you know. Um, I have a lot of responsibilities with the horses, with my 
uh, with the business, with employees, with my clients. We run a lot of different programs. I serve a lot of different Facebook groups. And I think that the main thing is I continually remember why I love it. I can mm. every day, like, oh my God, I love this. I am, so, I am more in love with my business today than I was, you know, I've been in business uh, over 19 years, 19 and a half years. And I am more in love with it today than I was 10 years ago, or even five years ago, or 15 years ago, more in love today. And I think that's because I really focus every day on what I love. And, and it's an interesting question, because if you, a long time ago, there was a book um, by a guy named David Gordon, who was very, one of the originators of NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Mm -hmm. And he modeled me for the book, and the book was all about uh, how you create and maintain passion. And we, he modeled me, meaning he interviewed me for days and days, and it was on the topic of the horses. And so I got really uh, aware of how I maintain and create, how I create and maintain passion. And it's to remember why you're doing it, what you love about it, even when you're doing the most mundane or unfun thing. Mm -hmm. Even in the most un mundane, unfun things, saying, oh, my God, like I might lo not love one particular task, and that's fine. But I go, I am so lucky. Like, I'm so lucky to be doing this. I love my business. And I put energy and connection into every task that I do. You know, like mm -hmm. everything I do is somehow uh, works its way out into the, um, into the public in some way. And so I just think, wow, the energy I give to this, I infuse in this, you know, writing this promotional email or working with you on the Facebook ads or showing up on camera, whatever it is. It's like, I just, my love and passion for what I do, I, I just tap into that and make sure it comes through. So nothing's ever a chore that way. It's always a joy, not a chore. And I use my essential oils. I have here. <laughs> I just have to put on today. Here, let me put that on. Okay. Now I'm going to get even happier, right? Oh, excellent. Okay. Um, bring on the joy. No, I mean, it's obviously, if you've been doing this for what, almost 20 years now, yeah. what you're doing has been working. Your reach is constantly growing, even organically, mm -hmm. but before you ever did paid ads. How do you con stay consistent with your marketing efforts? Um, that's also a great question. I think that that is... Um, the first thing is that it's, it, it, takes, it takes entrepreneurial discipline to be consistent with anything. And I talk a lot about this, about having entrepreneurial discipline, entrepreneurial maturity. And early, 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 the first year of my business was a terrible year. I call it the year of uh, fear and tears. And it was so terrible. It was just awful. Um, made no money. I mean, didn't know who I was, what I was doing. It was really bad. And the second year wasn't great, but it was better. Um, but... I, I, set a, um, I set a rule for myself early on that at that time when it was just me, that if I didn't have a client, I was marketing. Like my, I booked out my client times and if I didn't have clients, I was marketing. Plus I had marketing times that I booked out. I'm a person that likes a lot of structure and I'm, I'm a highly creative person and you know, I've got that artist temperament because um, you work with me on the ads and sometimes you have, to, <laughs> you have to handle me on that and you do it very gracefully. Um, but um, uh, so I'm a person who's incredibly creative. And as a lot of creative people are, uh, we can chafe under, you know, like I don't want somebody telling me how to do something, but at the same time without structure, I feel untethered. I feel it makes me, it gives me a lot of anxiety. Mm -hmm. So I like a lot of structure. I find it very calming and to have that routine. And one of the things I really have learned as a creative person, which goes to your question about marketing is marketing truly is a habit. So I went to do, it's interesting, I went to do something with marketing last week that I don't do very often. It was a type of writing that I don't do very often. And it took me like an hour to do something that if I was in the practice of doing, doing it once or twice a week, would have taken me 10 to 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I really believe we train our brain. And this is one of the, the tricks, the hacks, is that like if you're, writing, if you're writing a blog post or if you're outlining a Facebook Live or whatever it is, right? You know, whatever you're writing, um, I'm getting on camera, like I'm on camera every single Tuesday in my free Facebook group, The Tribe of Courageous Coaches. Every Tuesday without fail, I'm on live. That's the way it is. So I know that prior, you know, I have a set schedule where I have to figure out what my topic is. I have to write the little promo. Like there's pieces that have to be created for that. And I have to do it on, a, on the clock, on the clock, because otherwise it doesn't happen. It's stressful. It takes too long. And I really don't like it when stuff takes a long time. 
You know, I remembered Nora Roberts. She's, I don't read any of her books, but she's written like 85 books or 90 books or something. You know, she's a, I don't know, she's one of these hack writers. I don't know. But anyway, she's a good writer. But, and, she, and somebody asked her, how is it you've been so prolific? And she said, I have my butt in the chair every day. It's just, you have to have that discipline of doing your work. And for me, the thing with marketing, I think it's really important, and, and our, our listeners and viewers here might appreciate, is that for me, marketing is not this separate thing. It's like, it's not like marketing's over here and then I get to do my work. Mm -mm. For me, marketing is the work. Marketing is the work. So I coach through my marketing. I train through my marketing. I let my passion show through my marketing. Everything, it, marketing is my vehicle for what I do. So it never feels like there's a separation. Mm. And, and, there, and, and, I, and I get to feel really fulfilled through the marketing. Absolutely. I mean, for those of us that maybe have in the past felt like marketing was sort of yucky in some way, it's, it's like it requires a reframe, right? Of like mm -hmm. getting, like bringing, inviting the, the right people who need <laughs> what you've got into sort of your realm. And it's an invitation and not a push. Exactly. And, and yeah. people will ask me all the time, well, how do I find my first clients? How do I find my first clients? And I'm like, oh my God, you're so totally asking the wrong question. I get that why that question is asked, but it's, the, it's not the right question. It's a fear-based, scarcity-based question. And it comes literally from that fear part of our brain, the, you know, the lower part of our brain. And I really believe in attraction marketing, not, not to say that you sit there and you know, stare at a wall and chant and meditate and people come to you. It's, you know, you have to do the work. You have to show up and the universe will show up with you. But what I mean by attraction marketing is that when you really put all of you into your marketing and you are consistent and you are frequent, consistency and frequency, it is critical because repetition, repetition is the mother of prosperity. You know, mother, repetition is the mother of prosperity. That's what I believe. And so um, <clears throat> when you are, attraction marketing is being clear with your message, coming forward with your message, experimenting. Marketing is just guessing and testing. I mean, you know that. We go through that with the ads, right? You've trained me to how to look at the ads and what, what we're going to tweak, and they get better and better and better. And, and they convert better and better and better, and we make more and more money from them. And I think that when you have an attraction mindset with the marketing, you're not trying to grab. You're giving and helping and serving. Marketing is service. And I mm. really believe, and then I'll get off my soapbox about this, but I really believe that marketing is an incredibly intimate experience because it's just one-to-one. -one. I mean, we might have hundreds of thousands of people watching, hundreds or thousands watching this particular interview here today, but it's only one person's eyeballs, right, at a time. It's just one person. So again, it's like from me to you to that person. And so mm -hmm. I believe marketing is really intimate and deeply connected. And because of that, mm -hmm. those are feelings that I like to feel on a daily basis. So I love marketing. Love it. Thank you for that. <laughs> Listen up, everybody. <laughs> Kendall Summerhawk is, is serving it up. <laughs> how do you, and, and I know this is a thing for you um, because we've worked together for so long, uh -oh. but how do you stay authentic as you bring in help and delegate? Um, great question. That's an easy one for me to answer. I am so crystal clear in my company values and my, and I talk, you know, honor and integrity are tied for first place in my company values. And so that, though, like that's number one, those two honor and integrity, honor and integrity share the spot for number one. So that right there really makes a difference. And my team knows that um, my team, I really believe in leadership with my team obviously empowerment and self-empowerment. I really, you can hear I'm all about, again, the individual and the greater, the, to, the, to, you know, serving the greater good. Um, but I really believe in leadership, being of service and that I haven't done any reading about it, but I know there's a phrase that, about being a servant leader. And I just, that just so epitomizes who I am and what I'm about because I'm about as being leaders as women. And at the same time, doing it from a place of service. I love love. I adore. I am obsessed with helping people. I love it. And, and doing it in a way that is empowering, not creating um, codependency. So it's the same thing with my team. So I'm really clear. I'm really clear with them when they come on board um, that we always, I'm a deeply kind person and I believe in kindness. And sometimes if you have a really cranky client, you know, most, most of part our clients love us, but on occasion you have somebody who is having a bad day or they're having a bad year or a bad life or whatever. And I'm just not going to 
I'm not going to, I'm not going to join their, their story. I'm not going to jump into their story. I'm going to acknowledge them, but I'm bring them up. And so I'll kill somebody with kindness. I'm like, kill them with kindness mm-hmm. and always take the high road. So you can hear these values coming through. And that's why it's easy to stay authentic because my team knows this and I train them on this. And, you know, I really school them on this a lot and they get it after a while they get it into where it's just then second nature. Mm. Love it. So um, when, before you ever started running ads, and I know you ran ads a bit before we started working mm-hmm. together, what, um, tell me about when you were putting focus on reaching people organically and how, what was working about that? Okay. Um, <clears throat> what's worked, and I, I have to be honest, I didn't do anything. I'm sort of a lazy marketer, actually, which I know no one would think that looking at me. But I, and up until like this last year, I thought I was like the laziest marketer. Um, and what I mean by that is I was always consistent, but I didn't do 5 million things. And I've been in business long enough that it was before social media. So I know it makes me sound like I'm 140 years old. But um, <clears throat> what I've always done is write. Uh, and it's really about being consistent. So I always had a blog post every single week. And now that's being on video with my Facebook group. Um, and I'm obsessed now with distribution, uh, meaning taking my content and distributing it. And I think that one of the things that's, come, that's been a good thing because of social media, in addition to the ads, is that you can, like I can take a blog post and I could do it as a Facebook Live, the same article. I could do it as a podcast interview if I wanted. You know, you can repurpose your content so many different ways and nobody cares. Um, it doesn't matter. And it used to be people would say, oh, if I put it on my blog, then I can't do it over here because they'll have already seen it. You know what? They haven't already seen it. <laughs> That's not true. People aren't paying that much attention. God, I wish they were. Um, you know, we'd all be billionaires, right? Um, <laughs> but also, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, I think that it's, uh, people need the repetition. They need to see things and hear things more than once um, to really get that messaging. So what I did organically was post on the blog and, and use, uh, we use Meet Edgar to, there's lots of other programs out there, but to distribute little snippets and bits and pieces of the same content and, uh, and to get it out there. And to really, the other thing is to be crystal clear what your call to action is. I see a lot of content that people produce that is, it's okay content but it doesn't have a clear direct call to action. So I always start with what is my call to action, my CTA. Is it gonna send people to the tribe? We're really into building up our tribe of courageous coaches. We have several thousand in there now, which is great. Um, so everything is pointing to the tribe, everything. Like at the end of an article, like on the, my, my uh, website, the, the footer, at the end of the blog, I don't even have to think about it, it's just there. It sends them to the tribe. Everything is going towards the tribe. So it's really being clear and not having 5 million things you send people to, having one thing or two things at the most you send people to. And over time, that snowball effect really, it really does add up. Yeah. Well, and I think not only repetition, but people have different ways of learning. It's, you know, it's some people learn by video, some people learn by reading. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think it's it's good to have the same content repurposed in multiple formats. Um, So... Yeah, that's one thing I always tell clients is like, yes, let's do a video ad. Also, let's do a written ad. Let's do a short one. Let's do a long one. Some people respond differently to different right. things, but same CTA. <laughs> yeah. Same CTA. I know I've got to get my video ads. I haven't started doing that yet. You've been bugging me about it for months. So I've got to get on that. <laughs> um, how do you stay in alignment with your customers? Like, how do you make sure that what you're offering um, and, you know, you've like whatever it is that you're providing people, um, how do you make sure that those resonate with your audiences? Yeah, I think that um, this is, so I'm going to be totally candid with you because I know everybody says to survey, survey, survey. And um, I actually don't do that very often. I personally find surveying takes me off my game. And so, and not that it's a bad thing. It's a good thing. It just isn't super effective for me. So on occasion inside the tribe of courageous coaches, we will ask them questions you know, we will do a short survey. It's like, what would you, uh, what, what, what topics do you most want to hear me teach about? And we'll do that about every two or three months. But in terms of really talking about um, staying connected with what people want, you know, I, there's two things that I do. I listen to my customers. I really listen to the clients. I listen to what they are struggling with, what they're asking about more than just one person, you know, more than just a random question. 
And that's why I've created so many great titles and done you know, really well with our different programs and products over the years. So I really listen to them. And they're not saying, oh, Kendall, why don't you teach X? They're saying, oh my God, I keep struggling with how to charge. I know I'm not charging what I'm worth. I know I'm not charging what I'm worth. And I heard that so many times. I went, wow, you know what? I can help you with that. <laughs> and so I, this is a long time ago, I created a product called How to Charge What You're Worth and Get It. And I actually trademarked that phrase. And that's a core part of the certification that we teach. So it's like really listening to what people are saying. Um, and if you just put your antenna up, you're going to hear it. The other thing that I do, though, as a leader, as a leader, is I, I, I have to be ahead. And I naturally go ahead and say, okay, where is it that people, what's going to really help pull them forward? What is going to help pull them forward? So I don't always want to be reacting to what they're telling me that they want. I want to be able to say, hey, ladies, because our clients are all, except for like two, they're all women. I say, hey, ladies, if you want to have this success, here's what you're going to need to get there. Here's what you're going to need. And that is a bit of an education process to go through with people, but it is well, well worth it. And it really sets me apart. You know, I'm a category of one in what I do. And um, so that's, that's also, is really, I listen to my intuition and I ask, where do they need, what do they need to do in order to get what they want? Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. So you were reaching people organically really well. I mean, you did it for almost 20 years. Um, what got you interested in paid ads? We had done paid ads a long time ago and I completely abdicated my power entirely. Um, they made us a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars off of one home study course. So it was successful in that respect until it wasn't. And I learned a lot about, I'm not going to sit and go through all the dirty laundry of the ad agencies I used to work with, but there's a particular model that luckily you don't do. That's why we work together. And we've worked together now, I think a year, over a year. Yeah. Just yeah. pretty good. Um, very good, I think. Um, <laughs> Uh, there's a particular model out there that doesn't work. And I felt really ripped off and resentful and pissed off. And so didn't do the ads for a long time. Um, I have like PTSD, as you know, because you and I talked about it when I came on board with you. I said, I have PTSD from this. And you work very differently. The way you charge is very different. The way your team is very, works is very different. And so that really, like, I don't have PTSD from it anymore. I'm, I'm healed. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, and so what got me interested in the ads was, the, you know, is the reach, just to be able to have that reach. And I've been extremely happy with how they worked for us. Um, and it's also a learning curve. And I think that for me, because the ads are not something that I – naturally go to. It's not my nature and, and to do that. Um, so it's something I do fairly mechanically, like working it through is fairly mechanical for me, meaning it's not like, oh my God, I adore Facebook ads and I'm so good at them naturally, but let me hire somebody to help. It isn't like that. It's an area of my business that I feel a little fumbly around. So I've been really grateful for you and your team to help make that easier, to be patient with me um, and to be kind with my emotionalness around it. And, um, and I've been super happy with how they're working. I mean, I'm thrilled. At this point, I'm thrilled with how the ads are working. And I wouldn't have said that prior to us working together at all. Well, you know, I didn't say that when we started. Aww, I'm really touched. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think um, it's an important thing to, to, yeah. to not, we can't abdicate, we can't abdicate sales. We cannot abdicate um, any part of our business. The one thing too, I will say that's been really interesting for me, and you don't even know this, I haven't told you yet that in doing the ads and me getting more involved with them, not that I'm doing them myself because that's not my experience or um, expertise, but it's as I'm learning more about them and how they work and seeing what converts and what doesn't, it's really helped me get even more into the experience of my ideal clients to really step into her world and be part of, you know, to be on her feet in a certain way. And that I think is extremely powerful and it's really informing all of my marketing. It's really shifting all of the writing and speaking that I'm doing. Mm. So I'm curious what kind of, you've, you've touched on it, but what kind of results are you seeing since writing um, ads? More people signing up for stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't get any more complicated than that. <laughs> um, we are, we saw like in this last launch we did, we saw just quick off the top of my head numbers, 
Um, we saw better than a 50% increase in the number of people who signed up for the launch, which was great. Um, and, you know, as, as, I, as we work together on the messaging of the ads, we're seeing more and more people, um, you know, coming into conversations or buying the, this the program off the, website, off the website, really coming into conversations. We're primarily outside of a launch window. We are a conversation-based company. So we're seeing more and more people coming in. And I think that for the most part, the people have been very well qualified as well. And that's been important. Yeah, really important. Thank you. Well, I, I think also, I mean, you keep saying sweet things about me and my agency. And I just also want to say that it's, it's a testament to you and how you show up and mm -hmm. the way that you're willing to sort of, because I, I know you've got very specific you are the artist and you do have very specific sort of needs when it comes to what you're putting out there. And one thing that is a huge value of mine is to make sure that the client loves how they're showing up um, in people's news feeds. And so, um, you know, I appreciate your patience with us as we sort of work back and forth to, to really hone in on the exact messaging that will help you not only reach your people, but feel really, really good and authentic. Yeah. And it's a really, this is a relationship and yeah. you know, the, the um, it's a relationship between you and myself, but it's also a relationship I have with my, uh, with the people who are seeing those ads. And so again, I mean, you've heard a consistent theme in what we've been talking about here today for me, intimacy and connection are vital. I'm mean, like just vital. And so I, I am extremely particular. Mm -hmm. Is a good way to put it. <laughs> extremely particular about how I show up because it's my name. I can't, I'm not hiding behind a, a, some anonymous company name. This is, this is me. It's Kendall Summerhawk that's showing up. And I have a great reputation. I have a reputation for a certain level of quality, you know, very high quality. I have high standards. And so I, I'm very protective of that reputation. I protect it at all costs, really, because goodwill has also been a core value for me in my business is creating goodwill. It's like, it's like everything to me. And so, um, so those ads are an extension of me. I may not be writing them or designing them, but they are, they are represent, representing me and my brand. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm easy in some respects because I'm so clear and not easy because I'm so particular. Well, I love it. <laughs> I, I share the same high standards. Um, so <laughs> I understand. Yeah. What's the um, next level? How do, you, how do you plan to impact even more people in the coming years? Um, yeah, great question. I am starting a podcast. So that's good. And I don't want to give away the title yet. I know. I don't want to give away the title that's all around women and self-worth. And, and it's specifically for women in the coaching industry, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a podcast for women in coaching, a success podcast for women in coaching. But um, so I, do, I really expect that to, to greatly enhance our reach. Um, the other thing is certifying more women. We have, oh my God, you know, people um, sometimes will say, well, aren't there enough business coaches out there? It's like, oh my God, you're kidding me, right? There are so many women starting businesses. Um, last year's survey by American Express, they do a survey every year. And actually, I think these are 2018 numbers. It's over 1,800 women just in the U.S. per day are starting a business. And that, that's only the ones they've managed to survey. That doesn't include the millions of businesses um, worldwide. I think women-owned businesses worldwide, I think the number is close to 12, 12 million. I can't remember. It's, a, it's some huge number. I can't remember anyway. It's a gigantic number. There's no way I could ever create enough business coaches to serve the world is my point. Um, and we have client, we have coaches we've trained all, all over the world, all over the world. And, um, and being successful in nooks and crannies of the world, you wouldn't immediately assume that they could be successful and they're being successful. So I think it's really expanding our reach so that we can certify, train more women. Because this, again, if you go back to my mission, it's to empower women's financial independence through entrepreneurship, specifically through coaching. Not, not that everybody coaches coaches, but by me training coaches, they can go out then and coach other women in business to be successful. Because as we know, and this is the real core, like the real heart of why I do this, my fiery why is because, as we know, it's statistically proven that as women have more money, good things happen in the, uh, in the world. Children get fed, children get shoes on their feet, they go to school. It makes me want to just weep to think that in the United States kids go hungry to school. It makes me so upset. 
And so I want to change that. I want to get, sorry, <laughs> I didn't expect to cry, but I want to get money into the hands of women because then they, they take care of their family. They take care of the community and the whole world prospers. And I don't ever want a woman to be in a situation that where she feels she doesn't have a choice that she has to stay in, whether, whether it's a crap job or a crap marriage or, or whatever, a crap situation, because she doesn't have the money. I never want that to happen. Mm. That's really why I care about getting money into the hands of women. Oh my God. You just brought tears to my eyes too. Let's... <laughs> <laughs> You said we were going to be laughing on this and now we're crying. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, I love it. Um, how, how can people find you? I mean, so anyone can find the tribe of courageous coaches. coaches. Yeah. The easiest thing is if you just go to kendallsummerhawk.com forward slash tribe, just go there and it'll redirect you to our Facebook group. It's free. Um, it's a vibrant community. I show up there every week on training Tuesdays. Uh, training all around coaching and different aspects of running your coaching business. Nobody talks about that. And I talk about money. You know, I'm the money girl. And you know that, Sarah. I'm the one. I mean, oh, my God. I'm the money girl. It's, that is, God put me on this planet. I am clear about this. God put me on this planet to change a woman's relationship with money. I'm so crystal clear about that. So we talk about money a lot. And, and money, not just our relationship with money, but money in terms of pricing, you know, your fees, how you're handling money having courageous money conversations, all those types of things. And we're talking about the co how to run your coaching business, how to have high end, because I'm a big believer in high ticket, high ticket offers, and how to set your business up to have a tremendous amount of freedom. You know, I get to spend time just about every day, every morning, I'm spending hours with my horses. And um, <clears throat> that's a blessing. That's a blessing. And I love lots and lots of freedom. I don't like my calendar being overbooked at all. Um, so I talk a lot about that, how to set yourself up. Uh, because simplification is really the key to uh, freedom, but it doesn't have to tamp down your income. You can make, look, I run a seven and multi seven figure business and I have a ton of freedom, a ton of freedom. Mm. So we talk about that a lot. So kendallsummerhawk.com forward slash tribe. We'll get you there. Beautiful. Thank you. And then how, this is the final question. Mm -hmm. How do you stay focused and aligned so that you're not spreading yourself too thin and missing out on what matters most, which is your own spirituality, self-care and personal growth? Yeah, I come back to center with it, not only every day, multiple times during the day. And I come back to center with my word of the year. And I'm doing an experiment. This is my, I had a word of the year last year, which was the word focus. And I'm using the same word this year. I've never done that. So I thought, wow, it was so successful last year. What, how might it help me even more this year? So I come back to my word of the year. I'm, I, I have to write down my goals I have, cause I'm so, I'm like the most distractible person ever. <laughs> so, and I just, every day throughout the day, I say, okay, wait a second. Am I being reactive and getting pulled or am I staying on my path, on my track for the day? And so I keep like coming back to center, coming back to center every day throughout the day. And, and I have a list. I'm a super, like I have my list here. I'm a list maker. I love checking things off. And, um, and I'm always unrealistic as to how much I can get done in a day, and that's okay. But, um, but I focus on, you know, what am I doing today to drive revenue? What am I doing today to drive leads? Like, that's my focus, always, always. Leads, revenue, and leads, that's it. And, awesome. Yeah. And so, if, if, yeah, I just have gotten into that habit. You know, I'll leave you with this. We're always training ourselves, right? We're constantly training our brain. So let me, and we're constantly being imprinted. I'm very... Um, considerate, I will say, very considerate about what I'm training myself to do and how, what I'm imprinting and re-imprinting. So I'm very clear. And I know the horses have taught all this to me because if you're, mm. not, if you're not consistent with a horse, oh my God, they'll take over and they're really big. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm so, I'm so thrilled that we got to um, end this conversation talking about your horses because yeah. I know that that's your passion. I can see one. Oh my God. It's there. everything. It's my whole life. Yeah. My poor husband, he knows. <laughs> he wishes he was first in my world. I'm sorry. I love him dearly. And my horses are number one. They're my whole reason for being here. Are my horses. Aww, my I love it. I hope to someday see your horses. They're anytime. They're, they're pretty amazing. <laughs> well, thank you so much for this. Um, it was such a pleasure and an honor. And, um, uh, thanks y'all for listening. Have yeah, a beautiful day. You.